we are surrounded with machines that have some kind of controlled system. The motor that spins uh, the drum of your washing machine has a controlled speed. The same with the motors that move your CNC machine. Don't you have one? Uh, the heating system the heating system in your house has a controlled temperature the same you have in the oven and in the iron for clothes and in your fridge so whether you are a technician who may be already used a PID or you are a complete noob that has no clue of what a PID is in this video you will see in three simple steps the basics of any controlled system why a PAD is a necessity, what it is and how it works. Also, we will see how a PAD control could be made into an electronic circuit in a very simple way to understand. So follow the whole video if you'd like to learn more about this topic. For starters, let's see what a controller system is. So let's take, for example, the motor of a washing machine. Its job is to make the drum to spin at a constant speed so to smash the wet clothes together to remove the grime from the fibers with the help of uh, water and soap however as the drum moves the laundry toward the top the laundry falls down and this causes a sudden variation in load of the motor for the motor and this happens uh, even if you have a vertical tub um, even though in that case the action is different because uh, it is caused by the interaction between the internal uh, agitator with the external drum uh, but uh, the effect is the same you have a sudden variation in load for the motor and uh, this jerky load makes the motor to change its speed degrading the washing action and inducing instability that may lead to increased power consumption and a poor final result so what we can do to prevent all this well to contrast this we can use a PID which stands for proportional integral derivative in contrast theory it is summarized by this formula ah that's scary that's it well don't worry I will try to keep it uh, as simple as possible so even a perfect noob will understand it well almost I hope so <laughs> to control the speed of the motor we need two elements the required speed uh, that is called the set point and uh, the feedback uh, that tells us uh, the actual speed of the motor subtracting these two values uh, or just making the feedback negative and then adding it to uh, the set point uh, we get the difference uh, that is the error between the set desired speed and the actual speed and um, this error then can be fed into this uh, um, the device that provides power to the motor thus changing the force that the motor exerts to the load and therefore the speed because of the feedback the error would be reduced towards zero making the motor to spin constantly well that would be nice in an ideal world but because we have losses along the path we need an amplification to compensate for these losses however at this point uh, we may overdrive the device that provides power to the motor making the motor to suddenly speed up or down at the minimum uh, error too much also the mass of the load and of the motor itself introduce a delay that may cause the uh, to feed a signal back uh, which is out of phase uh, and uh, that is it reverses and becomes positive uh, so it uh, adds up uh, with a set point instead of a subtracting making the whole thing to oscillate this could be a little bit complex to understand so let's try to visualize it with the pendulum, pendulum. say if you want to keep the pendulum at uh, a given point out of its rest position uh, we need to uh, push it I have to push it uh, the right amount at the right timing uh, to keep it in position but if I push too hard or out of phase the pendulum begins to oscillate instead so we have uh, the common signal the set point the negative feedback as uh, sum matter an error amplifier 
and we can translate this into an electronic circuit like this. The set point input and the feedback uh, join together into the submission node and then into an operation amplifier that goes to the error output. As we've seen, I cannot amplify the uh, error too much because I run the risk to make the whole thing unstable. Go figure an oscillation in a washing machine, soon it will make the machine to jump all around the room. Though if we keep the amplification from being uh, too large, uh, at best we will have a constant error, which means the motor will never reach the, the desired speed. But what if we continuously add the error over time? In that case we can have uh, the effect as a huge amplification, but delayed in time. This is what an integrator does. So let's add an integrator to our electronic model which is now it's a PI proportional integral. A resistor that carries back the error to the summation node controls the proportionality of the error, in other words, so the amplification gain. A capacitor connected between the error output to the summation node operates an integration of the error. While in many commercial applications a PI is just enough, what I did mention is that an integrator, while it is useful to reduce the error and uh, to provide more accuracy with stability, it also introduces some kind of sluggish response. Uh, we can make uh, the response more aggressive, but this will lead to some kind of overshoot. To imagine this, uh, think that when you're driving your car, uh, if you are a bit too aggressive with the gas pedal, the car would overshoot the intended speed and you soon need to release the gas pedal a bit after you realize the speed went too far. And you can avoid this by predicting what would be the speed of the car, so refrain to push too hard your foot. Similarly, we can add something that works as a predictor of the future trend of the motor speed. And this is, can be done with a derivative because it provides the difference uh, between the speed now and what it was just a moment before. And this can give you a trend. Uh, the more the difference, uh, the more it will be likely the motor will overshoot. And so providing this as a feedback, uh, it will provide uh, a compensation for this trend. And voila, we have our derivative into our electronic circuit. A capacitor in parallel with the resistor of the feedback input uh, operates as a derivative anticipating the variations from the feedback. Well, I hope you've been able to follow me quite easily so far. If so, click the like button below. But now let me introduce you into some further considerations. The PID we have seen so far is able to provide a good accuracy and stability. But uh, what if the motor reaches its maximum power and it's not able to cope the acceleration required? Let's say you push hard the common speed uh, all of the sudden. There is no way the motor can follow this request. So it will just do what it can. However, in the meantime, the error would accumulate over time and when the motor finally reaches the intended speed, the error would be so large that no derivative compensation would cope with this, causing the motor to continue its run and overshoot spectacularly the intended speed. Because of this, a negative error soon would build up, making the motor to rapidly decelerate, making again the error to accumulate and so on. The end result is a damped oscillation made of a reliable positive and negative overshoots until the speed finally gets stable. To avoid this problem, uh, we can add a detection when the system got saturated shutting down the integration when this happens. In our circuit we can translate this using a couple of, of uh, Zener diodes uh, in counter polarity. As soon as the error uh, amplifier gets closer to the saturation, the Zener diode uh, will provide a path that bypasses the capacitor that was used to integrate the error. Of course, this is a proxy of the actual situation of the power provided to the motor, so the value of the Zener diodes should be adapted to match the limits of the output power of the motor. Let's make a summary of the final circuit. Uh, here we have um, this that works as a summation and amplification. 
and the sum is uh, made here through these two resistors and this from the input set point the commanded signal and here from the feedback and here we have just a, a signal inversion uh, so that uh, this signal is subtracted is actually subtra subtracted from the input set point and uh, here we have the uh, derivative uh, parameter that is adjusted through this uh, um, potentiometer and uh, here we have this potentiometer that adjusts the uh, feedback to the this uh, operation amplifier that uh, the proportional parameter and here we have the integral uh, with this capacitor that makes uh, uh, that act uh, as a integrator and uh, and uh, through this uh, potentiometer we can adjust the we can adjust the parameter of the integral and uh, here we have the two diodes the two zener diodes uh, uh, that act as anti wind up uh, to limit uh, the saturation of the operation amplifier and to prevent uh, the problem we we discussed previously also a final tip uh, here to prevent the noise to be amplified through the uh, derivative we can add uh, just a simple filter to prevent the noise to the high frequency noise to pass through we will see how to adjust the k p k i and k d parameters in a future video when i will have um, a driver for motors ready also uh, check out a previous video where i've showcased um, driver for a washing machine motor and um, about this uh, topic uh, i haven't covered all the details but uh, it would have been beyond the scope of this uh, introductory video so i hope you enjoyed this video if so consider to share and hit the like button which is a way for me to know i have done a good job also don't forget to leave your comments in the section below if you have questions or or, or if you just want to say hello <laughs> keep curious and hungry of knowledge thanks for watching see you next time bye <laughs>